today we're going to be flipping several of the items that I have found on my recent thrifting trips. This set of solid wood corbels were attached to a shelf that wasn't very sturdy, so I took them off to sell them as decor. I'm using Sweet Pickens Crackle Medium to give them an antique effect. I'm going to apply a thin layer with a sponge brush and let it dry for two hours. The thicker the layer, the thicker your crackle is going to be. So if you want a smaller crackle, apply a paper thin layer. I put on a decent amount. I really wanted my crackle to show. And I went ahead and added a little bit to a couple of my weathered wood decor boards as well. I'm using Sweet Pickens Moody Blue Milk Paint. This is a gorgeous deep blue color. Milk paint is a powder form you mix with water to form your paint. It's a one-to-one -one water to paint ratio. I use about a quarter cup of warm water and dump in a quarter cup of paint. Mix that really well for a couple of minutes. After letting it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, I've got a nice milkshake consistency and I'm going to apply one coat to these corbels. Now I'm getting really great coverage here. I'm not worried about 100% full coverage because I will be distressing. And notice I'm trying to apply the paint in one direction. If you overwork the paint or apply it in too many different directions, the crackle medium is not going to be as effective. And you can see after just a few minutes, it's already starting to work y'all. Once everything is dry, it's time for some sanding. I put 120 grit sandpaper on my sander and start hitting the edges and the corners, exposing some of that raw wood. And then I use 220 grit around all of my flat surfaces to just smooth out the paint and really give it that antique look. To seal everything up, I'm going to be using Dark Oil Wax. This is a great finishing product by Sweet Pickens. I apply a nice thick coat over the entire corbel and I'm going to let it sit for 10-15 minutes and let it soak deep into the paint. After it's had a chance to soak in, I take a rag and wipe off any excess oil wax. This is giving it an even moodier look. Now a little bit of the Sweet Pickens Grit, a powdered antiquing medium. I'm going to just take that and put it down in all of the low points and kind of hit around the corners and the edges. This just makes it look even more aged. Here is a look at the final result from this crackle medium and I am in love. I am so happy I have added this to the Sweet Pickens collection on my site. This set of corbels has already sold but I do have more available if you would like a custom painted set of corbels for yourself. And here is a peek at the decor boards as well. I love how they came out. This one used no crackle. And here is the one with the crackle medium, just so you can see the difference. If you'd like to grab any of the projects from today or any of the products I used on them, you can head on over to upcycledbybreed.com. I will drop all of the links that you'll need down in the description box below as well. For this project, we are going to be making this candlestick match this candlestick. Y'all think I can do it? So this is a beautiful faux finish and I think I can replicate it. This color of green is like exactly like that color of sweet pickings. So I've got a few steps here. Let's get this thing cleaned up and start with our base coat. My thrifted items that aren't super, super dirty, I usually just use a glass cleaner and a little rag, paper towel, and give them a good wipe down. DIY paint doesn't require a lot of priming and prepping, but it's always a good idea to start with a clean project. I'm gonna start with a base coat of the DIY Sandy Blonde to take it from the black to a more neutral brown. Mm -hmm. 
I'm using my F30 Klingon brush here to apply this paint and the coverage is amazing. I'm not worried about 100% coverage. As you can see here, after one coat, it is good enough. I have brought it out to my garage and I'm using some Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Spray to seal it up. You could also use a liquid top coat. This was just a little quicker and easier and it was warm enough this day to use it. I let two coats of the matte clear dry while I got a workout in and now it is time for step number two. I've got DIY crinoline that is going to be our lighter white color and I am going to be mixing it with a salt wash to get some amazing texture. And if y'all didn't know, my girl Sammy is now selling this salt wash over on her site, unicorndustdesigns.com. I'll drop a link down in the description box because y'all are going to fall in love with this product. Basic mixing ratio for the salt wash and paint is one to one. Um, there are different paints. You have to use kind of a different ratio, but for the DIY paint, one to one is perfect. So I just poured a little of my crinoline into a cup and I put about the same amount of salt wash in and you can see it instantly thickens up and gives you this beautiful thick texture. I'm gonna do just a little bit more. <laughs> I want mine to be nice and thick. I don't want super huge peaks today because I don't wanna do a lot of sanding just to give it some nice texture here. This is gonna look a little crazy at first, but stick with the process. I promise it'll look good in the end. For the next step, I have got Sweet Pickens O Olive. I think that green color is going to be a great match. Milk paint is in a powdered form, so you're going to mix it with water to create your paint. It is one part paint to one part water. I always pour my water in first, and I like to use nice warm water. doing a small piece of decor I'm just going to hand mix this paint if I'm doing a nice piece of furniture or a big custom job break out the immersion blender when I'm mixing up larger batches of paint I don't mind if there's a couple little clumps in here as it's going to help some of our distressing as well I let the paint set for about 10-15 minutes and it should be a nice milkshake like consistency I'm gonna add in just a touch of Extra Bond. This is a paint additive that's going to help your milk paint adhere to any slick surfaces. Now, this isn't necessarily slick what I'm painting, but I don't want it all to chip off. So I want to make sure my milk paint's gonna stick. The ratio on the bottle says one part paint, to half a part bond, but as you see, I just poured in probably about a tablespoon to all of that paint. Okay, I'm not gonna go for 100% full coverage either. I want some of these underneath layers to show through. And I wanna think about keeping some of the high points more exposed if possible. We'll see. If y'all don't have a Lazy Susan to paint on, I highly recommend, it makes life so much easier. the bond I got some crackle so some of this paint ends up chipping off a little bit which is okay but I'm glad I used the bond so it didn't all chip back back out in the garage for some sanding so I don't make a huge mess I have got 120 grit here and I am now working on sanding some of that texture down from the salt wash and you see as I sand the white color that I mixed with the salt wash starts to pop through and now I have all three colors showing, the brown, the white, and the green. So far, I think we're looking pretty good. This is gonna darken up a little bit when I seal it, so keep that in mind. I've got my DIY clear wax here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this sealed. 
just gonna use a chip brush. I put a little bit here on the top of my lid so I don't get paint specks down in my container. I'm gonna apply a nice even coat across the entire thing. Since there's a lot of chipping going on and I don't want any more to chip off, I went with a wax. A liquid top coat has more of a risk of causing even more chipping with the milk paint. My clear wax here and mix it with a little bit of the sandy blonde color to create a custom colored wax. You can do this with any color of the DIY paint into the clear wax. So if you didn't know, now you know. And I'm gonna go kind of around and apply this on the high points around the edges just to kind of help the distressing blend a little bit better. Now I'm just taking some of this custom mixed wax and kind of rubbing it in to the texture just to help make that base coat look more and more like this one. I want to add some wood tops to these candlesticks so I removed the metal one from the green candlestick and I cut some wood rounds with my jigsaw. I took that same crinoline color and just did a whitewash around my fresh cut edges put down a little bit of wood glue and using my pneumatic nail gun to attach the wood rounds. Let me know what y'all think about my makeover. Please drop me a comment. I really had a ton of fun recreating this faux finish and I want to keep challenging myself. So now I'm on the hunt for some more great faux finished items at the thrift store. A quick reminder of what that candlestick looked like before I started and after the makeover. Again, I had so much fun recreating this and these are available for $54.95 if you love them as well. If you love these thrifting videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you wouldn't mind, send this video over to a friend who loves thrifting and DIY content as well. That's going to help my channel continue to grow and help me bring you even more amazing content. And y'all, if you don't wanna miss any new videos, make sure you're subscribed to both of my channels, Upcycled by Brie and Lifestyle by Brie, where I take you along thrifting and show you where I find all of this amazing junk. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends. Take 172. If y'all enjoyed today's video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. It will really my second channel, Lifestyle Bright. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> the recent thrifted items I have shown on my channel. What am I saying?